Excel is one of the most extensive and useful piece of softwares that I have ever used. This is because it is still evolving and getting more powerful even after 35 years of its existence. We usually work with a set of formulas in our daily lives which we are comfortable with. But there are so many amazing formulas in Excel that we tend to overlook. Today, I would like to list down 5 such formulas or functions which in my opinion deserve bit more recognition since it can really ease out your work in specific scenarios. Let's go. Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms and much much more. So let's go. Hey everyone. So let's get started. The first formula that we're going to cover today is 3D formula. Now don't get confused by the name. It does not involve any 3D graphics of any sort. It simply signifies the dimensionality of the formula itself. Now let me give you an example to explain this in a better manner. I have a workbook here with four sheets containing data for specific employees and their weekly salaries. Okay. Now I want to see the sum of salaries of employee A from all the sheets, right? So I want a monthly salary in a sense. Now the obvious way or the most uh, common way that people might think this might be achieved is by applying a sum formula like this. So equal to sum employee A salary for first week, second week, third week and then fourth week. Okay. But this is not very efficient. Let's say suppose you have 150 sheets in your Excel workbook. What would you do then in that case? This this process will really become a tiresome process for you. So here comes the magic of 3D formulas. Okay. All you have to do is ensure that the data that you have is in the same position in all the sheets. So let's say my table here starts with A1 and all my employee data is till cell B6, right? The range is from A1 to B6. I just need to ensure that the data is consistent across all my sheets like I have here, right? Data is starting from A1 till B6 for all the sheets and also the employees are consistent. The, the cells where each employee is stored, the name of each employee is stored is consistent, right? So you just need to ensure that. And once done, you need to enter formula like this. Sum, write week one, colon, week four, an exclamation mark, and then the cell that you want to sum up for all the sheets in this case b2 because i want the sum of salary for employee a in all the sheets right so what excel is doing right now is it's getting this range of sheets like this week one to week four and it's saying within this range right sum every number which is there in cell B2 of each of these sheets, right? So you need to ensure that your sheets are in sequence. First of all, the things that you want to sum up, these are in sequence and you need to ensure that the range is consistent for all the sheets. Once you ensure that your value is there with you. So if you see the formula is short, uh, it's not that tiring for us to write this formula and even not to maintain this formula and if the number of sheets increases all you have to do is just increase the number from here right or else the sheet name whatever it is right all you have to do is just write the first sheet that you want to start your sum with and the last sheet sheet in that same sequence and it will cover every sheet in between both of those sheets okay now the second second set of formulas that we're going to cover today is large and small. We know that if we want to find the largest number in a set of data, then we can use the max function, right? And if you want to find the smallest number, then we can use the min function. 
But what if you want to find out the third largest number or second smallest number? What will you do? So now to find out the third largest number, you can use the large function. And this is how you use it. Equal to large, you give it an array. So in this case, this is the data set that I have. And then I need to find the third largest number. So I just write three and close the bracket. And that's it. Okay. Similarly, if you want to find out the second smallest number, you can write function small again, same array and two and press enter. Okay. So the third formula today is choose. Now, this is an interesting one. <laughs> choose is part of the lookup family of Excel functions. However, it is not as popular as some other lookup functions like VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP or INDEX, right? However, this is a powerful tool to fetch information from a list of values and is a faster alternative to others in terms of processing time. Let's see a couple of examples of choose function. So first example, and I'll start with the basic one. Okay. So in the first example, all I have to do is I need to identify uh, which employee is at position three. Okay. So I can see from this list, it's C, but I need to do it through a formula. I want to identify which employee employee name basically is at position three. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll say equal to choose. It's asking for an index number. So in this case, I'm going to write three or else I can also refer to a cell. So let me refer to this cell and and then comma it's asking for value one value two and value three so what it does is right now we're creating an index of values within the choose function so whatever index that you create start to bottom it will refer to that index and then give you the number or give you the value that you desire for a particular index number okay so uh, value one is a value two is this one, this one, this and this. By the way, instead of cell reference, you can also choose enter values like this in double quotes, right? So this is also a possibility. For now, I'm just choosing the cell reference. I have A here, but I want the value which is there on the third position. So I'm going to write three and it's going to give me C. Okay. This is a basic example of how choose works. but choose is actually more powerful when used in combination with other functions. So let's see an example here. I want to see the sum of values of each week, right? Based on the columns. So I want to see what was the sum of salaries in week one, what was the sum of salaries week two, and I want to give the user that flexibility to see. Okay. So I want the user to choose the week that he wants to, he or she wants to see, and then user can, you know, see the sum of that particular week. Okay. So we'll use the same cell uh, to enter a formula. So I'm going to write equal to sum. Okay. And instead of number, right, the first parameter is for number, right? Instead of number, I'm going to write choose. So now I'm using choose function within some function and the index number for this is this okay and again i'm going to make this absolute so that although i'm not dragging it but i'm going to make it absolute then i'm going to put first value as this entire range okay second value as this entire range and i'm also making that absolute so that it does not get disturbed even if i drag the formula okay and close the bracket for choose and close the bracket for sum now if you see it's giving me the sum of third week and if i sum up the third one it's correct right and let me change the number here first week it's giving me 2114 isn't this amazing so you can be more creative with choose function uh, combining it with other functions um, apart from some uh, do let me know in the comment section 
what you think you can achieve with this formula okay. number 4 pmt which stands for payment now have you ever wondered how banks calculate your loans emi this is how they do it okay so let's say in this example i have a loan amount of 3 million or 30 lakhs interest on loan is 8% and the loan payment terms is 20 years okay now let's see what would be the monthly ami for this loan giving these parameters we can use the pmt function in this case uh, the first parameter the pmt function ask is for the rate of interest in this case this is my rate of interest okay but i want to calculate a monthly ami so i'm going to divide it by 12 then it's asking for me for the payment n per is nothing but the payment term okay and in this case it's this one but again i'm going to convert it into months so i need to multiply it by 12 and the final one is the principal value in this case this is my principal value okay and the remaining ones are optional you don't have to enter those and i'm going to enter close the bracket and press enter so if you see this is the loan emi that i'm supposed to give to the bank in case of these loan parameters okay and i can change the interest rate from here and the loan parameter will change in case you want the number to be in positive instead of negative then you can just simply enter a negative sign in this parameter the principal value section and it will become positive okay so the last formula for this video is rept which stands for repeat did you know that we can create charts or visual representation of your data using formulas within a cell yes that is correct you can use the rept function which stands for repeat to create quick visuals within your cell you can also do this using spark lines but that's a topic for a different video now all you have to do is i have a similar data here right and uh, in this data i have a column created at the end where it will show me a visual representation of the salaries each employee has so that person looking at this data can easily gauge who has the highest salary and who has the lowest salary okay so i'm going to write rept the first parameter that it ask is for text so within this i'm going to enter a pipe sign you can use any character you want i'm going to use a pipe character within double quotes because it's a text and it's asking for how many times you want to repeat this character so i want to repeat whatever the value is divided by let's say 20 now the reason i'm dividing it by 20 is because 474 is too big of a number and i don't want that many uh, you know characters within my cell so that's why i'm dividing you can choose to you know ignore this part as well if you want the entire number if your number is too small to have that divided with anything okay so i'm going to enter like this i'm going to left align this okay and i'm going to reduce the font size also change the color to a red let's say okay and i'm going to drag this formula till the end now if you see it has quickly created a chart for us or a or a visual representation of the data for us which is dynamic whenever the data changes the representation will also change so that the user can quickly gauge uh, who has the highest salary who has the lowest salary and who is falling in median okay so that is it hope this was helpful and in case you found this video useful please subscribe to the channel so that it encourages me to bring such content to youtube more often thank you so much see you in the next one